Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, tomorrow, the eyes of Europe will be on Cardiff, home to the Champions League final between Juventus and Real Madrid. But outside the stadium, there's a political battle over Europe and the future of Wales after Brexit. A shock poll at the start of the general election campaign showed a surge in support for the Tories, but that appears to have fallen back in recent weeks. From Cardiff, our Home Affairs correspondent Andy Davies reports. Cardiff this week has been draped in the colours of UEFA. The Champions League final on a Welsh stage for the very first time. And it's apt, perhaps, that matters European are so prominent here in the run-up to this election. For here in Wales, as elsewhere, Europe has dominated debates. We can't control anything inside the EU with Unless the powers back here in Cardiff, because agriculture is a devolved matter. We'll be able right. to decide for ourselves we an only, agricultural policy been, specifically for Wales. We've only been entitled... <laughs> We've only been entitled to additional funds because Wales is one of the poorest parts okay. of the whole right, of we, the we, EU. We're going to come on are to we that. going to continue with that? Are we going to get Absolutely worse? No. It's fair to say there's been a real edge to this general election campaign here in Wales, and that's not just because of Brexit and how divisive it's been. It's also due in part to a poll conducted a few weeks ago which suggested that Wales, so long a Labour stronghold, might be about to fall to a blue invader. A sensational YouGov poll for ITV Wales in April suggested the Tories might be about to take a majority of Welsh seats for the first time in a general election since the 1850s. Once again, Wales is under attack. The Tories are seeking authority to impose their brutal policies on Wales. So Plaid Cymru's message was simple. The Tories are coming. Defend Wales. All this stirring talk of defending Wales, isn't it a little bit sort of melodramatic, a bit Norman invasion? Well, I, th I think uh, we, we have a sense of, that we've uh, had generations of economic decline, so you can forgive us, I think, feeling that uh, we have been forgotten by successive governments, both Labour and Conservative, and at this election, when there's so much at stake in terms of our economy, which is so reliant on exports, uh, then absolutely, we need a shield to protect us from the kind of uh, Westminster elite which never takes our interests seriously. Labour currently in government in Wales also warns of a downtrodden nation despite recent polls actually putting them firmly back on the front foot in Wales. Among their key pledges, an extra one and a half billion pounds for public services and policing to be devolved. What I fear more than anything else is a nationalist Tory government in London that seeks to grab powers to itself in uh, Westminster, to remove powers from the people of Wales, Scotland and, uh, and Northern Ireland. We already have a battle brewing over what happens with powers that return from the EU. They come to us in devolved areas. Westminster would have to, uh, to legislate to stop us having those powers. So yeah, our great fear is that we have a, 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 a Conservative government in, in London that is, that is very nationalist, very anti-Wales, uh, very anti-Scotland, very anti the, the periphery outside London, and that bodes ill for the UK. I think that's incredibly disingenuous. If you look at the fiscal framework this government's delivered, fair funding for Wales, you know, Labour was in power in both establishments for a long time, never got anywhere near that deal. And I think this is the politics of distraction, complete distraction from their day-to-day -day running of the public services in Wales. It's like Nicola Sturgeon up in Scotland. They're desperate to talk about anything other than their powers. But this is the general election, and I'm proud of the Conservatives' record of empowering the Assembly to get on and do their job. Oh, it's an absolute joy to be in Cardiff, the scene of the last time Blackburn Rovers won anything oh, at all. <laughs> Tim Farron in stand-up mode at the Welsh Lib Dems campaign launched last month. Like many other parties, they've pledged to kick-start the Swansea Bay Tidal Lagoon project, but with yet another desperately poor local election performance behind them, they might need more renewing than the energy they trumpet. Your party leader called you legendary uh, recently. <laughs> it isn't, isn't the problem that 
the prospects of Liberal Democrat influence in Wales are the stuff of legend rather than reality. Well, we have a proud history. There's no getting away from that. And we had a more successful electoral uh, past recently. I was When I first went to the House of Commons, there were four of us. That's the aspiration, to get people back. And I think this election is energising supporters, perhaps in a way that local elections wouldn't, with a plethora of issues on the ground. I think the party is energised in the key parts of Wales where we need to win seats back. Another party struggling recently, UKIP. Since the heady days of the Welsh Assembly elections last year, two of their seven Assembly members have abandoned the group. At the local elections, they were anonymous. How can you persuade voters to follow UKIP when even some of your own Assembly members have abandoned you? Well, this is a snap election and, of course, in very extraordinary circumstances where Theresa May is rampaging around like some bargain basement bodicea, uh, pretending to be what she's not, you know, pretending that she's the, uh, the, the guard dog of Brexit when she never believed it in the first place. So we, we need to have UKIP there breathing down the Tories' necks in order to make sure that we get the best possible deal from the EU. <laughs> A battle for a European title in Wales looms. But who will take the electoral prize here? What colour the dragon? The polls suggest dramatic mood swings. No shortage of pre-match hype here. Andy Davies. I've been speaking with the leader of Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. I began by asking her what her party wants from Brexit. We've put forward a positive post-Brexit plan to safeguard the 200,000 jobs that rely on tariff-free access to the single market, all of those jobs in the agricultural sector, uh, plus uh, a plan to make sure that we've got the powers and the tools in Wales to do that job of developing our economy. We're still so far behind, you know, wages in Wales are 10% behind the UK average. So it's stay within the, in the single market at all costs? Well, the jobs that are reliant upon that trade with the single market are uh, more concentrated in Wales. And, and in fact, if you look at our agricultural sector, a very high proportion of our agricultural produce is sold to other countries in the European Union. So we have to try and protect that industry in particular, but others as well. But there are also questions about our funding. At the moment, we get £680 million from the European Union because the European Union redistributes wealth from other parts of the EU to Wales, which has some of the poorest communities in the whole of the European Union. That funding has to come back to Wales. I have very little faith in the Tories to redistribute wealth. After all, that isn't what they're about, is it? But you see, the, the, the problem as we speak is we have no idea whether we're going to have a Tory landslide or, for the first time, people are really seriously also talking about the possibility of a hung parliament. And in those circumstances, in a sense, not just those people who have a chance to vote Plaid Cymru, but the whole country wants to know precisely what you will do in those circumstances. Will you back Jeremy Corbyn? We would make sure that Wales's needs were heard, and if that was through using our leverage in that hung parliament scenario that you've just described, then of course we would grab that opportunity. But the only way that we will have a strong voice as Wales is if there is that strong block of Plaid Cymru MPs elected. Okay, and that's why you... I'd appeal to everyone in Wales to vote Plaid Cymru. Right, well, but not everybody is arguing that. For example, David Ellis uh, Thomas, who was your former leader, is actually saying, look, where there's no hope for a Plaid Cymru uh, candidate, you should think of voting Labour. He left the party. He's uh, of our past, so to speak. Uh, I'm not going to comment on, on what former members of Plaid Cymru might have to say. Well, but he's not Plaid a small Cymru, voice. Uh, he's has not a, a small voice. Well, he's an insignificant voice to me, I'm afraid. <laughs> Plaid Cymru has put forward a very positive plan to uh, chart us through stormy waters ahead. This is the intriguing thing about this election. You go to certain parts of the country where there is great poverty, where there are people in real distress, and they're thinking of voting Conservative. I don't understand it. it. It makes no sense to me whatsoever, particularly in places like this in the valleys. 
People need to have uh, long memories. It was only uh, a few decades ago that the Conservatives decimated the coal industry here, put thousands of people out of work. There was a knock-on effect into other industries. My own father was made redundant during that time. I remember it very, very well. How people can forget about that, put it to one side, forgive them for what they did, is just unthinkable to me. And I have every faith in people in Wales to do the right thing on June the 8th and back played Cymru. Leanne Wood, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I've been getting away with it all.